It is Thursday, July 30th, 2020, and this is your Three Gorgeous Dam update. Four articles have broken since yesterday's video, including Three Gorgeous Dam weathers the flood challenge. Also courtesy of Daily Mail, China's Three Gorgeous Dam faces mounting pressure from raging floodwaters amid fears the huge hydro power plant could collapse. Up next, courtesy of Epic Times, flood peak moves along China's Yangtze River as water reaches dangerous levels. And last but not least, torrential rainfall causes more than 50 million flood victims in China. We also have some new Twitter footage playing in the background of today's video. Let's hop into it. Our first article of the day, courtesy of AsiaTimes.com. Three Gorges Dam weathers the flood challenge. Chinese state media stuck to the script that nothing had happened when this year's third deluge of the Yangtze River passed the Three Gorges Dam on Wednesday. The dam's operator said the 185 meter high barrier had since Monday held back more than a third of the stormwater hitting the Yangtze's upper reaches. At its peak on Monday, runoff from heavy rain in Sichuan and Shangqing poured into the dam at 60,000 cubic meters per second and was discharged at 38,000 cubic meters per second. Xinhui News Agency said no severe flooding was reported across major cities, including Wuhan east of the dam, and that the dam had mitigated the threat. But that last paragraph of the article differs from reports, videos, and the word from citizens on the ground. But I digress. Moving on. There have also been signs that Beijing could be shifting its preference away from hydroelectricity projects. China's National Development and Reform Commission has approved three projects so far this year to build nuclear plants or expand existing generation capacities, but no new dams or hydroelectricity plans on major rivers have been announced. Thank you for watching this video. If you are finding it informative, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. Now on to our next article. This comes courtesy of the Daily Mail. China's Three Gorges Dam faces mounting pressure from raging floodwaters amid fears the huge hydro power plant could collapse. The port cities of Qingdao and Rizhou on the eastern coast were the latest to see record-breaking daily rainfall last Wednesday, and the provinces of Yangtze and Anhui on the Yangtze River issued new red alerts on Thursday. The Ministry of Water Resources said 93 rivers remained above warning levels, adding that the Three Gorges Reservoir, China's biggest, will need to be closely monitored as incoming floodwaters surge. The current flood control situation remains severe and cannot be relaxed in any way, it said. Regions throughout China have been ordering emergency evacuations as a result of landslides, burst riverbanks, and mountain floods. China has vowed to take a scientific approach to manage floods and has made use of early warning systems as well as its dams and reservoirs to try to minimize the damage. However, experts say the heaviest rainfall in decades has exposed the country's over-reliance on giant feats of engineering like the Three Gorges Dam to regulate and utilize its water supplies. And honestly, it's hard to say how much damage was actually minimized. Moving on. And this comes courtesy of TheEpicTimes.com. Flood peak moves along China's Yangtze River as water reaches dangerous levels. The third peak of this year's flooding season in China from heavy rainfall arrived on July 28th at the midstream region of the Yangtze River, which is nearly 4,000 miles long and runs across central and eastern parts of the country. Water levels in Hunan province's Yuyang City rose above the alert level, meaning an embankment breach could occur at any time. Meanwhile, China's largest lakes, the Dongting and Poyang, which are in the Yangtze River's drainage area, and the 620-mile-long Huai River have been above the alert stage for days. While large parts of China have experienced historic flooding since early June, the regime's top officials have been conspicuously absent. No high-level official has yet visited the disaster areas as their predecessors did to put a positive spin on the government's disaster relief efforts. Officials warned on July 29th that heavy rain would hit northern China and might spark heavy flooding by the Hei, Yellow, and Sanquajian rivers. Since northern China doesn't typically experience flooding, residents of northern and northeastern China, especially those living in the drainage areas of the Yellow and Huai rivers, were asked by the authorities to make emergency preparations in case of a disaster. As of July 29th, authorities said that millions from 27 Chinese provinces have been affected by flooding since June including 158 people dead or missing, while 3.76 million people have been left homeless. In recent weeks, authorities in some parts of central China discharged excess rainwater accumulating in rivers and reservoirs into rural areas in order to protect cities from being inundated by floodwaters, often without giving advance notice. 
In such cases, it's difficult to assess the true damage and number of casualties. And that last paragraph supports the LA Times article that we referenced yesterday, where business owners were quoted as saying that they weren't given any warning before the government released floodwaters. Moving on. The Emergency Response Ministry also hosted a seminar on July 29th, urging local governments in the Yangtze and Hawaii River drainage areas to ensure the safety of local dams. After heavy water intake for weeks, the dams faced the perils of landslides, caving in, water rushing out of pipes, and collapse. To ensure their structural integrity, the ministry instructed governments to arrange for people to patrol the dams 24 hours a day. At 8 p.m. on July 27th, the third peak of flooding arrived at China's largest hydroelectric project, the Three Gorges Dam. Since then, the water level of the Three Gorges Reservoir has been rising, according to state-run newspaper Shangjiang Daily. By late on July 29th, the peak of the flooding passed the area of the dam and moved to the midstream region of the Yangtze. With that, the metropolis of Chongqing, located upstream, announced that ships could operate again after the city had banned all ships from the river on July 26 due to rising water levels. While Wuhan, the capital of Hubei province and located midstream of the Yangtze, reported higher river levels, the peak of flooding hadn't arrived as of late July 29th. Meanwhile, a surge in water on the Han River, which drains into the Yangtze and Wuhan, could cause the Yangtze to overflow there, the Yangtze River Commission within the Water Resources Ministry said. China's National Meteorological Center is forecasting that the Yangtze River's upstream region in Sichuan Province, as well as the rivers midstream in Hunan and Yangtze provinces, would be hit by heavy rainfall again in the next 24 hours. The center then issued an alert that eastern and southern Sichuan, southwestern Yangtze, and southeastern Hunan could be faced with mudslides. With the rivers located both midstream and downstream of the Yangtze reporting that they have topped alert levels, additional heavy rain and a third peak of flooding could leave these areas susceptible to severe flooding. And now our next article, courtesy of world.kbs.co. Torrential rainfall causes more than 50 million flood victims in China. Torrential rainfall that has pounded southern China for almost two months has reportedly caused more than 50 million flood victims and is even sparking ecological concerns for South Korea's Jejudo Island. Chinese media cited government data on Wednesday that 54.8 million people had become victims of flooding in the southern Chinese provinces of Yangtze, Anhui, and Hubei. Of these, 158 had died or gone missing while 3.76 million had been evacuated. Around 41,000 homes have collapsed, and some 52,000 square kilometers of farmland have been inundated, resulting in the damage estimated at around 23 billion U.S. dollars. As the Three Gorges Dam continues to spew huge amounts of flood water, concerns are rising that the massive amount of fresh water flowing into the South China Sea could have a negative ecological impact on the coastal waters off Jejudo Island. On average, 44,000 tons of fresh water flows into the ocean from the Yangtze River each second, but that amount has increased to 77,000 tons per second due to the heavy rainfall. As a result, a tremendous amount of water from the Yangtze could flow into the coast of Jejudo Island about a month from now. Ecologists say that could cause the salinity of ocean water off Jejudo to decline, resulting in higher sea water temperatures and wreaking havoc on the marine life in the region. The Jejudo Marine and Fisheries Research Institute set up remote controlled detection centers on the western waters off the coast of the resort island earlier this month and has stepped up monitoring of salinity levels. And I think this is a good place to wrap up today's video. I hope that you found it informative and check back soon for more content. <coughs>